In this tutorial on the Russell Brown Show, I want to compare two different types of panoramas. In this case, this panorama was created from a series of images that I captured from a QuickTime video clip that I took with my GoPro Hero 3 here in the sky and of course I'm flying in my DJI Phantom Quadcopter to capture this image. Now the results were very good, but let's compare the results here from this video document to this document which was created from a series of still images taken with the same camera. Now let's zoom right in on this. I'm going to go into 100% zoom on both of these images, just like this. And let's take a look at this right here, this graphic here on the Stanford campus that we're seeing from this aerial perspective. Once again, let's go over to the video side and let's zoom in to the same level. Okay, so both panoramas were created with the same camera, but in this case, the camera is shooting a video clip and in this case, the camera's shooting single frames. Now, in the single frame mode, I'm in the 12 megapixel mode. Here, when I'm capturing the video, I'm in the 4K cine mode found on the GoPro Hero 3. Let's analyze this because there are advantages and disadvantages. First of all, let's just take an overall look at the two. This panorama created with the video clip seems a little bit soft as compared to this panorama that was created with the single frames from the same camera. However, look at the detail here, for example, in the flowers here in the middle of the S and the grass. Now let me switch over to the video clip version and check this out. There's a lot more detail here in the grass and I can almost see the individual flowers. However, they're a little bit soft, so I get more detail with the video but it's a little bit soft. The same can be said, for example, if I look here at clouds. With the video clip, I get very soft and detailed clouds. The gray shades really express the quality of the clouds. If I go over to the single frames here, check this out. They're a little bit more contrasty, and I find that if it's really bright in the sky, that the areas that are brightest tend to burn out to a solid white. It does not seem to hold the fine detail in the brightest areas of the clouds in this single frame mode here on the GoPro Hero 3. I'll double click on my hand tool to see this entire image that was taken with single frames. And once again, let's go to the video clip version, double click on the hand tool and look at both of them. So there's an overall softness to this particular image created with the video clip, and there's a sharpness to this one. Okay, let's move forward. I now want to discuss how I created this panorama using the QuickTime video clips from my GoPro Hero 3. Let's go right over to Adobe Bridge and take a look at the original clip right here. Now this is the video that I shot in the sky with my DJI Phantom. As you can see, I'm moving from right to left. This is a stabilized video because I'm using a gimbal here on this particular DJI Phantom. It's a really great way to now capture images in the sky and they're really stabilized. Okay, so this is all I need, a pan from right to left, as you see here. My next step is to go back over to Adobe Photoshop, right here. I'm gonna go up to my file menu and down here to import, and then over to Video Frames to Layers. We want to bring in the frames from that video. I'm gonna select the video here and select Open. Now you get to decide how much of the clip you want to use and most importantly, you get to limit the number of frames. Now let's just take a moment to review the actual settings I'm using on my camera. As you can see here, I have the video set to 4K Cine. This is the largest video file I can achieve. Here you can see that my frame rate is at 12 frames per second. That's the maximum frame rate you can achieve at this 4K Cine setting. It's just perfect for this project. You don't need any more. Notice that my spot meter is off and ProTune is on. 
I like to use Protune because it gives it a little bit of color correction before it gets to Photoshop and it helps make it easier to color correct the video. Ok, now you know those details. Let's go back to the import video layers dialog you see here. And I was talking about these settings. Right over here you can see that you can limit the number of frames by checking this box. I know that if I enter in 10 in this particular case, it's going to give me just the number of frames I need. Now based upon how quickly you move your pan and the frame rate will determine how many frames you pull out of your video. You may have to run some experiments until you get about 20 frames and that works pretty well for a panorama. I'm going to click OK. It will now process this video and pull out the frames I need for this project. OK, there you can see that I have about 23 layers over here to the right. So I've extracted 23 frames from that video clip. Now I'm going to review through these and make sure there aren't any extras that I might not need. For example, this top frame, if I turn it off, I don't think I need that frame. So I'm going to delete it by selecting the delete key from my keyboard. And in fact, I'm going to delete the second one as well. I'm going to go down through and turn the visibility off of these frames until I can see the entire panorama moving here in front of me all the way over here to the right. Now that's going too far, so that means I need to select this frame, hold down my shift key and select this frame and delete them. So essentially what I'm doing is going through and editing this so I have just the frames I need for the panorama. This would be the same process you would go through if you were creating a panorama from still images from the same GoPro camera. But in this case, we're extracting the still images from video. Now that we have the still images, we need to export them. Now this is a fairly complicated process. You're starting to think that maybe using still frames is much easier and you're right. Because I need to select all of the frames here to the right, go to my file menu, and down to Scripts and over to Export Layers to Files. That's right, I need to export all of these out to a folder so I can bring them into Adobe Camera Raw and correct for the colors as well as apply a lens profile. OK, I've set this up earlier and I'm sending them to a targeted folder on my desktop and I'm saving them as JPEGs at a quality of 12. I'm going to run this and it will then process each layer one by one and place it into that folder. Again, a little bit complicated, but I'm doing this so that I have the individual frames extracted from the video and I can then start from that point. Let's click OK. Let's go ahead and close this document right here. Let's go back over to Adobe Bridge. I'm going to target this folder right here called Video Files. This is where I saved my files that I extracted from the video. And here they are right down here. Let's review through them again as I click here with my right arrow key. I can then pan across the sky as you see here. Now of course, I need to have a central focus here in the middle and then I need to have the separate frames on the left and on the right to make this work. Let's select all of these images now, holding down my shift key and selecting all of them. And let's go ahead and apply some presets to this to color correct them and get rid of the distortion from the lens. I am selecting all of them and then from my keyboard I'm selecting the command key on the Macintosh or the control key on the PC and the letter R. And now we're inside Adobe Camera Raw where we can make some adjustments. Over here to the left, I'm selecting all my images. Then over here to the right, under Presets, right here. I happen to have a preset already set up to correct this particular image. And just to save time, I'm going to select the GoPro Hero 3 video preset that I created earlier. Of course, this preset is correcting the color on the image, but I also need to go into this icon right here for Lens Corrections because I need to enable lens profile corrections. Check this out. I'm going to check the box right here 
and then I'm going to select GoPro, Hero 3 Black Edition, as you see here, and then, then applies the corrections. Now we're all done here inside of Adobe Camera Raw, so we can select Done. It will then apply those settings to all the images. Our next step, of course, is to go to the Tools menu, down to Photoshop, and over to Load Files into Photoshop Layers. I like to bring all of the images, of course, into a single document as layers with all of the corrections so I can easily create a panorama step by step. I could use the Photo Merge technique, but once again, I prefer this technique because it lets me do experiments on the way I combine the images together because you never know exactly which different preset is going to work best for your images. Now all my images are here. I select them all here to the right. And of course they're color corrected and they have the preset for the lens correction applied as well. Because I have the preset selected on these images and only because I have the preset selected, I can now go over to the edit menu and down here to auto align layers. Selecting spherical because that is the secret answer to making this work well and then click OK. It will now process all of those images. Fantastic. There it is. It's combined all of the images together. Now I'm really surprised when I bring video together how smooth the transition is between each of the frames. The next step, let's go right over to the edit menu and down here to auto blend layers. You'll notice that they're all still selected to the right. We're using a blend for panoramas, so we click OK because that was all set. You could then continue this project by enhancing the colors or straightening the horizon a bit, but this is a great start to give you the basics to working with a quick time video clip here inside of Photoshop CC. Give it a try.